we're going to prove the theorem if, uh, if uh, the series of a sub n converges absolutely, then any rearrangement converges to the same limit, which we'll call a. In some notation, uh, the s sub n are going to be the partial sums for the series with a sub k. Uh, I'm going to let the series b sub k be the rearrangement where b sub f of k is equal to a sub k, and t, of t sub m is the, uh, the partial sequence for the rearrangement. So it's often helpful to jump to the last line if at all possible. Right? We want to prove that this rearrangement here converges to A. So what I need is I need some, uh, let's say, T sub M. Oh, the way I should, the first line is let epsilon be bigger than zero. And then jump to the last line. T sub M minus A. It's got to be less than epsilon. Well, how are we going to do this? The only way that I know how to make sense of this A is through this series up here, the A sub n, which I can do through this sequence, this sequence of partial sums, S sub n. So what I'm going to do is the old trick, uh, T sub m minus S sub n. I'll call it capital N, which I haven't defined it yet, but, but there'll be some capital N that works. Uh, which is going to be less than or equal to by the triangle of equality, t sub n minus s sub n plus s sub n minus a. Oh, and that's going to be, I have two things, so I'll make them both less than epsilon over 2. And there, my t sub n minus a is going to be less than epsilon. If all I need to do is figure out what this n is, so let me mark what I need to do. I need to figure out what this n is. I need to make sure that this epsilon over 2 is, is taken care of. And this epsilon 2, I'm not even going to circle that because that one I know, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is um, right there, there exists an n1 such that uh, sn minus a is less than epsilon over 2 uh, for all n bigger than or equal to n. Why is that true? Well, it's true because the series a sub n converges absolutely, so therefore it converges. So I really only have two things to do. I just need to make sure that I can make this thing here less than epsilon over 2, and I need to figure out what that capital N is. And to do that, uh, uh, I'm going to, well, let me set it up first, much like the book does. Uh, this thing converges absolutely. So what that means is that this thing converges. So there exists an N2 such that, um, how do you want to write this? Um, we're going to use the Cauchy criterion here. And that's going to be a sub m plus 1, absolute value, plus da da da, plus a sub n is less than epsilon over 2 as well. And you know what? These things I'm adding up are all positive, so actually I don't really even need these absolute values here. So I'll just erase that. So I'm actually doing pretty well here. So now I can actually tell you what the n is going to be, even though it won't be clear. Uh, why it's useful yet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let n equal the max of n sub 1 and n sub 2. So, period. So I have to find this. And so my next, I'm going to split this into two screen, screencasts. My next step is going to try to convince you that I've set it up so that I can prove that this right here is less than epsilon over 2.